Hey Railbirds, we're back here to 2023 Derby City Classic. We have more nine ball action for you. Round five. Both players have zero losses. Alex the Lion, Peg Lion versus Scott the Freezer Frost. This should be a good match. Scott Frost known mostly as a one pocket player, but he can play a little bit of nine ball too. I am being joined by Mark White. Thanks for joining us, Mark. How are you doing today? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good to be back again. You just mentioned Scott Frost is mainly a, a one pocket player. This man breaking off is a pretty good one pocket player as well. Right, you are, Alex. Uh, definitely no uh, no stranger to the game. Dry break to begin. I mean, this race to nine. That is correct. We're playing a race to nine. We're racking the balls with a nine ball on the spot. Breaking from a break box, which is between the first and third diamonds. No jump cues allowed at Derby City. And it's uh, the break is going to be the winner's option, which is usually winner break. Yeah, nice easy start up, especially for a left hand up. And this looks pretty good weight as well. May just have a slight angle, can stun off this side brow. A little bit of left hand, just to spin it up slightly. Yeah, he did nice on that one ball. One of the two was looking like probably the most difficult shot of this rack, and it really wasn't that difficult, so he's off to the races now. The only other issue really might be the four to the five, but that doesn't really look like that big of an issue either. This is a nice layout to get started with, just what you want. Yeah, he's finished perfect on this three as well, hasn't he? Can just stun off the side rail, leave himself sort of centre table. He'd love to stun off this side rail and back over for the five. He wants yeah. it to slow up. Well, it hasn't, has it? Might have to draw straight back. Has he got the angle to do that? Looks like he might have. So deep draw. Oh, it finished perfect for him, didn't it? Just avoid this six, he's perfect. That was nicely done, drawing to the rail and back out. He's gonna oh. play this one off the Accurac, look. <laughs> I was just gonna say the Accurac's <laughs> hanging way off that rail. I thought he was gonna use it for a minute. <laughs> Freeze up, ice cool. And I've just heard he is the latest addition to the commentary team. I know he does some commentary for you. He's also going to be doing it at the Moscone Cup, December 6th. Ali Pali is in the big time. Yeah, he's been doing a lot of commentary for us, a lot of one pocket commentary and some nine ball. Uh, but yeah, just recently it was announced that he's going to be doing commentary for Moscone Cup. So I, that probably means we can't afford him anymore. <laughs> All right. You're so stuck with me for now. <laughs> Scott Frost taking the first game, one nothing, race to nine. Placing the outs field. Kirak on the table, one of our sponsors, along with yeah. Bad Boys. Yeah, this match brought to you in cooperation with Bad Boys. The stream also sponsored by Hustle and USA Clothing Company, JB Custom Cases, Jerry Olivier Custom Cues, as well as Litman Lights. Thank you guys for your support. This tournament put on by Diamond Billiard Products. Simonis Cloth, Aramith Billiard Balls, the Outsville Accurac. Master Billiard Chalk, and also Accustat Video Productions. Be sure to go check out their YouTube channel as well for lots of great matches from this event. Big news today. Jason Shaw has just been sponsored by Aramith. Announced that today. Facebook. 100 years old this year. Not Jason Shaw, of course. Aramith Balls. <laughs> 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 so Scott then breaking off 1-0 flashy sneakers on there look 
Trying to make the one in the side, didn't make it. Two's gonna go in the side, but unfortunately the cue ball's gone past the eight in the corner. So a nice easy starter then for Alex to get himself into this game. Yeah, we don't, so we don't, we don't need no stinking referees to move the accurate. Ac <laughs> Just take matters into our own hands. No biggie. Yeah, he wants a slight draw. Yeah, he needs just the right angle on this three to get to the four. And once he gets past the four, then that opens everything up. And this looks ideal. And we know the four will pass the eight because the cue ball just did. Which gave Alex this opportunity. Wearing his own brand of clothing, which is going to be released very, very soon. Peggy Lion, the lion. Just waiting for a player on the next table. Alex will be playing in Puerto Rico for Team Canada. He'll be alongside John Mora and Brittany Bryant. That's a pretty strong team. Yeah, it is. Well, you're guys are pretty strong as well Kevin <laughs> April Larson Shane Van Boning recent eight ball world champion and Tyler Steyer who's just been announced on the USA Moscone Cup team so it should be a good event yeah not a bad team also so nice stop shot in this six ball Stop, stop, stop. Basically, we got a road map here. Take uh, Highway 6 to Route 7, Freeway 8, Interstate 9, and Bob's your uncle. Or more Dead formally, nine. <laughs> or more formally, Robert's your father's brother. <laughs> Just draw off the side rail here. Very light grip on the cue, you can see there, look. Yeah, hopefully when Alex goes to Puerto Rico this year, he won't injure himself. He had to pull out of a, a match in the World 8 Ball against Jason Shaw last year after having a little bit of a rock climbing accident. Came into the arena and couldn't walk. On level oh. ground here, 1-1 one, one with Scott. Well, he should stay away from all the rocks except for that, uh, except for that cue ball. That's the only rock he should be uh, concerned with. Yeah, and just, just watch this, the two ball. That's the wing ball. He'll be trying to make that into this bottom left-hand corner. Yeah, the racking rules at Derby City say that uh, you're supposed to put the one in the front, the nine in the middle, the rest of the balls at random, no pattern racking, with the exception of the two ball. The two ball still has to be at random, but not at the very back of the rack. You got to put it somewhere else. Yeah, he made the one this time. No shot on the two. It's going to push out, I would imagine. Push over to this, where the chalk is, I guess, wouldn't be a bad idea. If he's going to push anywhere. Yeah, jump cues not allowed at Derby City. Not that, not that he would be jumping at this. 
Yeah, but it does stop you pushing to a jump. You might push this to a jump normally, but not this time. So, yeah, where the chalk is, look. Oh, he aimed right at the chalk. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, he's gone a little bit too far, I think, but it's okay. He's left a really thin safety on here if he wants to come off this side of the two. Cue ball. Bottom and side rail over behind the six. Uh, whenever I get into a safety battle with a one pocket player, I usually, I usually come, I usually get the worst of it. But these are both one pocket players, so wonder who has the better safety game. Well, right now it might be Alex because that's not looking like a very safe uh, safety. Yeah, and he can play the cross bank here. He could play the cross bank and cue ball sort of over by the six kind of direction. Hopefully leave himself a shot on the three if he does make it. Otherwise it'll be safe. Oh, is he looking? This is a touchy little shot. If he's attempting what I think he is. No, he went that way. Oh, he's got away with that, has he? Might have left an edge. Yeah, it looked like he might have been trying to play the billiard off the five into the corner. Well, kind of like a two-way shot, you know, cue ball back up table if he doesn't make it. A bit of a two-way shot, I yeah. think. I think you're right. So you're going to try and draw off this over behind the five. Oh no, he's gone for it. And perfect on the three. What a shot. Whoa. Look at that. Pretty good. Now, does he draw, try and get closer to the four? Or does he just hold the cue ball there and play a longer four? Well, it looks like you can shoot us with a high ball and go one rail straight up and down between the six seven. Well, he come the other way. Surprised a bit at that one, Kevin. Tricky shot. Played it with lots of high right. Oh, nice recovery, though. Yeah, he could have got there by just holding the cue ball off the three, couldn't he? That's why I thought he was <laughs> going to play. <laughs> Makes to do it the Tried hard to way. get closer to it. Yeah. Just likes to show off a little. Oh, no, not after yeah. all of that. Lots of movement. And he's one of these players that doesn't get right down on the cue as well, does he? He doesn't get his chin down on the cue. So a chance for Alex. Unexpected chance. High left. from here then playing this with high left yeah, checking the cue ball back over perfect line stop shot on the seven eight in the side come down for the nine be a very small player isn't he one of the smallest on the circuit but he's one of the best with the bridge has a good background in snooker I'm sure he used that many times on a 12-foot table. The way he started looking up at the scorebies, I thought maybe Scott gave it to him, but he's just waiting for a person to shoot over on the next table. I know Scott's a nice guy. He's not that nice. He's going to make you sh shoot at least the eight. 
It's going to make you prove that you can get good on the nine before he gives it to you. There is a no conceding the nine ball rule at Derby City, but yeah, players tend to ignore it. We've seen it in the first two racks anyway. It was given the nine ball, but we're going to see it potted this time, and in it goes. 2 1 Peggy Lyon, seven away from the target of nine. Yeah, every once in a while, you just got to make them prove that they still remember how to make the nine. Can't give it to them every time. Yeah, we saw that big concession from Fed or Ghost recently where he left the 7, 8 and 9 for Jason Shaw in a semi-final no less I think he was so disgusted with the 7 he missed your newest American welcome to the team with the break all right another dry break Scott has a good look at this one no clear path to a pocket Possible one for a combination in the side, but if he shoots that, where's the one going? More towards the seven? Is it going to get tied up amongst those balls? Risky shot if he chooses the combination. I think he could play it and run the cue ball into the five, you know, and he'd be very unlucky not to have a shot on the one. Well, he's going for it. Yeah, just didn't spend enough time on lining the angle up for the combo I don't he, believe yeah it looked like he shot that pretty quick very nonchalant you didn't know I spoke French did you <laughs> no that's my response in French no <laughs> no <laughs> so nice little Roly roly on the two. Little drag. Now probably stun off this back rail. I oh, like come um, to the side as well. Yeah, I like bottom left two rails towards the far. Mm-hmm. I do too. Keeps you on that line. The angle is just a little too steep to do that, so he chose the one rail, one rail route. Yeah, I think this five does go past the eight. Having a look, he's going to hope it does, but otherwise the positional shot's going to be a little bit, a little bit more tricky. It looks to me like the five passes the eight. Well, he played position for it, so it must go. so it's easy to get on into all six pockets, well, five pockets anyway. Anyone apart from this side. I really like Alex's, I really like his game. I like his nice 
compact stroke and doesn't do anything too fancy with the cue ball usually well unless unless it unless it's called for but uh, just likes to keep it simple compact stroke to minimize any body movements all of that just breeds consistency and Alex is a very consistent player travels all around he's just started playing Chinese eight ball as well joined the hay ball tour he's done okay at that as well had a couple of high-ish finishes last 16 or last eight and they're really very very difficult fields those Chinese eight balls Alex extends his lead, three to one. Race to nine. Very, very good tournament, this Derby City Classic. It's legendary in the pool calendar. Really hoping to get there next year. Yeah, it's open to anybody that wants to play. There's uh, they don't cap the fields. Uh, they, they, however, however many people show up, that's how many people they let play. Uh, no qualifiers. Just come up, put down your hundred bucks, and you can play against these great players yourself. I wonder if he's going to change sides. He's breaking from. Yes, I'll tell you why I guessed that. Look where he's put that two ball again. He's looking to make, he's putting the two ball as the wing ball every time he breaks. And now, that's why he swapped it over, because he knew he was going to swap over to the other side, but he still missed the two ball. Well, he's got it in the other pocket, he's fluked it. But he's he made did the make, one as well. Yeah, he made the one straight into the side this time. Yeah, he made three balls in total. Interesting though, Kevin. Going to watch out for that. So he's got a little look at this three ball. Has he got enough of it? Does it, it doesn't pass the eight? Does it just be a safety behind the six? Maybe is he trying to get? I think he's got him. Yeah, he's got him. All right. Even if he could see the edge, that corner pocket over there looms large, so he might be kicking at it even if he could see the edge. Good hit. Good solid hit. No luck though. No, that three has plenty of room to pass the seven to the corner. Just drag over to the side rail for the five. Can he hold the cue ball right up, right up to the rail? He may be able. To, he may be able to go forward to the other side of the five. We'll soon know where he places the tip. If he goes very low, he's coming this side. Well, he might be running it through. Yeah. He's going through, isn't he? That is, he was concentrating so much on the cue ball, he forgot to put the three. Yeah, these diamond tables have four and a quarter inch pockets this year. In previous years, it was four and a half inch pockets. This year, they went to four and a quarter. I feel sorry for diamond. They have to keep changing the size of the pockets every time they install tables. <laughs> Obviously goes in the side this. Does he? 
does it? <laughs> On my screen, it didn't look like it goes in the side, but uh, but you called it. I guess you could see it better than me. Yeah, I'm closer than you. <laughs> nice shot. Needs to put a bit of power into this one, though. Stun off the side rail. Oh, he could draw it straight back even better. Uh, what's the angle like? Looks pretty straight. He might have to just draw back to where his cue is now. Just. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, his body language looked like he uh, didn't like it, like he was going to draw into the side pocket, but no issues. <laughs> that was funny. He picked up the nine ball, he was going to throw it up the other end of the table, and he realised he's got to set it up now. <laughs> <laughs> right, Scott gets one back, three to two. Trails by one in this race to nine. Did you say this is no losses yet? This is on the winner's side? Correct, neither player has a loss. So, so Derby City... Isn't. Yeah, go on. You are just going to say what I was going to say. You've yeah. just stolen my words out of my mouth. Go on. <laughs> well, maybe you can describe it this time. I described it the last few times. Maybe it's your turn. Well, I like this because it's it's kind of unique. It's not traditional double elimination, but if you do lose a match, you can pay another 100 bucks and you're back in the mix. And then after every round, they have a redraw. And so you're still in it and you can buy back once for $100. Yeah, you only get one rebuy. You can't just keep, uh, you just can't keep reaching into your pocket, pulling out more $100 bills. Although that would make the uh, prize pool really blow up, if you could. Yeah, make it pretty long as well. <laughs> Even longer. And you don't have to be the best player to win the tournament, you just have to have the most money. <laughs> Alright, Scott has made the two on the break. He's got a good look at this one. He will Looks like he may have to settle for a 3-4 combination. Unless he can come back for a 3 cross-side bank. I think you're right. He's going to... He's a little bit worried about this corner pocket, I think, for the cue ball off the one. He's got to be a little bit careful here. Needs a very high ball and smooth stroke. Or he needs to draw it. He needs to make up his mind what he's going to do here. Doesn't like it, does he? Yeah, so he's going to go for the, the draw. Hold for the 3 4. He's trying to hold into the 7. What he was doing, that's why he's missed the, the one ball. And it'd be interesting to see how Alex goes about this now. Yeah, his attention Oops. was divided between where the cue ball was going and pocketing the one and just took his mind off the one for a split second. Cost him the shot. Done. 
could choose to leave a longer five here. I'm sorry, it's the four. Is that the four or the seven there, Kevin? It's the seven, right? Uh, that he's shooting the three ball past or by his arm, but that looks like the... Uh, by his arm. Oh, that was the seven by his arm. Yeah, yeah. Position for side pockets always tricky. Burt Kinister hates them. In case you've ever watched any of Burt Kinister's instructional tapes. Back in the 90s and 2000s, he was very prolific with those instructional tapes. I think he ended up with about a hundred of them. Gonna go round a couple of rails here. Healthy dose of left spin to help it around. And oh. well, maybe a little bit uh a little bit flat on this. Has he got enough to run it high left off two rails? I think that's what he's looking at. He's going low. He's cutting this in. Yeah, he was pretty flat on that seven, but didn't seem to matter. He doesn't mind a bit of a cut shot on the eight. No big deal. Can he hold it? He can. What a shot. And Scott and says that's good. 4-2, race to nine. It sometimes amazes me when people give the nine. Okay, I know it's nine, 999 times out of a hundred, a thousand they're gonna get it. But you know that it's nine ball and you run all the balls and you still got to make the nine, you know, to win it. It always amazes me. None of the previous balls mean anything. Anyway, 4-2 then. Alex yeah. to break. Yeah, when I'm uh, playing, I don't like it when, they, when someone gives me the nine. Because I like shooting the nine, you know, I've, I've shot in all of these meaningless balls. I want to shoot in the ball that means something, you know, let me shoot it. Don't take that away from me. Yeah. It feels, it feels good to make that uh, game winning ball. Especially yeah, and it's a confidence thing, you know, it gives you, you know, if you, if you never let your opponent shoot a nine, you're not putting them in any, under any kind of pressure. And then all of a sudden, when a player doesn't get on the nine, the pressure's worse because you haven't played any nines, you know, so you've got nothing to to fall back on, if you know what I mean. Right, Alex falls back into his chair and lets Scott to the table. I think he has enough angle to come around this side. Yeah, that's the key, isn't it, here? Just come past it. That's perfect. Bit of work to do now to get to the four and then back down for the five. So, not over yet this rack. And you need to fall just slightly on the wrong side of a ball and it changes the whole dynamic. Mm. 
not too unfriendly that. So now he can play bottom side rail in between the six and the eight. Yep, coming three rails. He's come round three, even better. Took the traffic out of the um, equation, didn't he? Yep, he's in good shape now. I thought I thought Alex had given it to him. <laughs> <laughs> A friendly bunch here at the Derby City. enough. Cue ball is going slightly the wrong way for the seven. Yeah, the eight ball could come into play if he wants to go to the rail and back out. So not going to take any chances with that eight. Just roll it in. You can tell he's not really a nine ball player, can't you? Just the odd little shot here and there. Slightly yes. different positional choices shall we say yeah and he's ended up on the wrong side of the seven so he has the angle taking him away from the eight so he's got some work to do unless he wants to cut this in the side which he is and I'm sure a lot of players would have played to get onto the six when he played off the five they would have played he's gone the six into that top left corner as we look instead of trying to hold it for the six it was kind of the the start of his positional problems and he's still not 100%. So we've got to play another good one here. No problem. Very nicely done. Alex says, that's all yours. Close match. Within one, four to three, race to nine. Seven for possible seventeen. Yeah, just agreeing here to take the spot off, and I, I hate them spots. I just don't see the point in them. Not on these new, you know, on the new when they put a new table in with a new cloth on it for a tournament that's going to last what. 10 days or something, you don't really need the spots. They're more of a hindrance than anything else. Right. They're there for protection on tables in pool rooms and, you know, your pool clubs, stuff like that. I get it. People are banging the balls down on the spot sometimes. I think but Scott the, actually read the directions on the Accurac. I think he actually read the directions. Did he? Yeah, he did it. Uh, he did it the Chris Renfro approved way. He did the push up, did he? Yeah, he put the eight balls on there, pushed it up, got them all nice and tight, and then put the uh, ninth ball on there. Good man. Well, we've learned something today as well. Scott Frost can read. <laughs> well, he may have watched the video. <laughs> we keep we keep teasing Chris, Chris Ren Renfro that he needs to make an instructional video on how to use his rack. For those of you that don't know, Chris Renfro is the owner of Outsville, one of our sponsors. Outsville.com. You can go and buy the Accurac there, along with chalk and other Q, Q Sports accessories. Outsville.com. Tell him Mark sent you. Tell him Mark sent you. Yeah, Chris is actually sending me some racks to Puerto Rico when I go. He'll be going to have a go with this one. He'll be mindful of the five ball, but it won't be disastrous if he gets a friendly little kiss off it. Trying to get him in the back of it, I think. Oh, he could come to the side of it. What a shot that is. God, I really 
got hold of that cube over there. Nicely done. Yeah, nice draw stroke on that. Similar shot here, just soft up. Just another nice little draw shot. Not entirely comfortable with the angle. Might be just a smidge too much angle to comfortably hold it for the three. What has he done there? Was he trying to get behind the five with the cue ball? I'm not sure what he was doing. I think he playing the two into the corner. He was all over the place there. It was that Shane Walford I just saw on the bottom of the screen there, your latest addition to the Moscone Cup team. Congratulations to Shane Walford. Welcome to the team. Uh, nice kick safe there by Scott. Even if he doesn't even if he doesn't get him behind the six, he's left distance with the two ball on the rail so no you know no no easy shot for Alex even if he wasn't hooked behind the six although he darn near made it in the corner off that five well, very close didn't he he's left it on now though so a chance for Scott to draw level Fargo doesn't give him much chance of winning this game look just 18% He's only a rat down. Soon to go level. Oh, don't get behind that four. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's a poor shot, Scott. The freeze are not frozen to the four, but pretty close to it. Certainly that, hooked. That was a pretty cold roll. Oh. And we're on a roll with our puns at the moment. Is he going to cut it in? Wow. No, but uh, good hit. Unfortunately, he's left pretty easy shot on the three. Position to the four. Well, the five ball could play an issue here. If he wants to shoot this with a right spin and go three rails around, that five could get in the way. I think he can come short side if he wants to low left I wasn't sure if that was available to him but I think you're right he, I think he does have that available and right you are again that's twice this match that's so unlike you well, I better stop now that's <laughs> normally my quota for the whole match never mind we're only seven racks in we're in the eighth rack two correct calls whatever next I'm going to be asking for a raise in a minute <laughs> Sorry, I think you're uh, driving through a tunnel. You're breaking up, Mark. Sorry, I missed that. I was driving through a tunnel. What did you say? <laughs> it's still a little bit tricky, this. Needs a... I wonder, will he risk? Or does he have to play into the eight and the nine he might leave himself an angle on the six here to just do a little bit of rearranging of the eight and the nine yes that's what he's done look see yeah that's perfect purposely angle. left himself this angle that's really good love to just clip off the right hand side of the eight as we look quite thick though but he's got to be careful of the nine Oh, 
how well has he hit that? Couldn't have been better. Just caught the eight, a glancing blow. Also caught the nine. Now, what do you do here? Can he draw across the face of the nine for the eight into the same pocket? Or does he risk going into the nine? Hmm, he's in two minds. Yeah, it's got that awkward angle where, yeah, it's nothing easy here. I think he's got to draw past the nine to this side rail. Wow. Beautifully controlled. I'm sure that's what, do you think he played that? I do, wow. I do think he played that. So does Scott Frost. It impressed Scott Even enough to give him the game. He made some good shots, didn't he, in that run out? Yeah, Alex is looking like he came to play. Scott just had a couple of momentary lapses of concentration on a couple of shots. Cost him a couple games, but he's still in it. He's only trailing by two in this race to nine. Wasn't that a Pink Floyd album? A momentary lapse of reasoning, wasn't it? <laughs> Watching him rack these balls is making me comfortably numb. Oh. -ho. Getting ready to hit discussion this. There. Yeah, getting ready to hit this wall of balls. I should say, all in all, it's just another ball <laughs> in the wall. <laughs> Who else is thinking of Pink Floyd songs right now? <laughs> Just has to hope after oh, this break nice. he doesn't end up on the dark side of the moon. Well, if Scott does lose this next wreck, he won't be in dire straits, but he'll <laughs> certainly have a little bit of work to do to get back into this. All right, dry break for Alex. Bring Scott to the table. You gotta win these matches, Kevin. You don't get money for nothing. You know, I was just about to make a money for nothing uh, pun. <laughs> you beat me to it, damn it. <laughs> I think he's got him. Nice little safety there. Yes. Nice little kick shot here as well, though, isn't it? I fancy him to make this. Could go two rails, could go one. Catch it a glancing blow. I think that's the way to take this on. Two rails, make it or get it safe. He went once. He's left it. Surprised he didn't play that two rails to be honest. Well, if you're trying to make it in the side, going two rails makes it a lot more difficult to make it in the side, I think. I just thought we had more chance of getting it safe that way if he did miss it. That is true. But I'm not going to question the lion. Considered the 3 9, Kevin. I think he's coming around to have a look at it, is he? 
it is a possibility. He could shoot a stop shot on the two for the three nine, or he he could come back across for the three in that upper left corner, bringing the cue ball near where the eight is. Is that a miscue? It must be. Wow. Just not uh, things just aren't going right for Scott. Look at this. <laughs> does it go straight in the side or does he play it off the five? I mean, he's almost straight into the corner. I must be seeing these angles wrong today. I'm waiting for you to say, well done, Mark. That's three. Well, I don't want your head to get too big. You already have a hard time getting through the door as it is. <laughs> I just thought he gave him the best position on the four, you know. That's why I thought he was going to play it like that. Very creative player, isn't he, Alex? Absolutely. I really like watching his one pocket game. One pocket may not be, be for everyone, but a lot of strategy involved and a lot of creativity and Alex really shines in in that environment pretty good nine ball player too all right Alex taking his biggest lead so far of this set six to three in this race to nine It does seem like he's wrecking the two ball on that as the wing ball pretty often. He's done it every time, bar one. So he's going to be breaking from this side as we look. Which is unusual because the time he made three balls on the break, he broke from the other side. So I'm surprised. Guess he doesn't want to make that many balls on the break. And the one, he only wants to make one, the two ball. Hmm. Or the one. Both of them is dry. All right, Scott springing into action. Then cut to the side with the one ball. He's just eyeing up the two ball to see if two goes past the three. Yeah, he'll do well to avoid the three here I think oh, mate. oh what 
a lovely double kiss there. Uh, couldn't have gone better that one. Yeah, and I think he's going to want to come up high of this three ball so he can come short side of the four because the four ball has to go up table because the seven blocks that pocket. Uh, and he's let that cue ball get away. He played it in the side, didn't he? If he cuts this in, he can come around three rails for the five. Yeah, some right hand spin. Hit the cue ball's got to slow Ooh. down. Okay, he's all right. Yeah, it's not really his potting that's the problem. He's obviously, a good potter. Good one pocket player, as you said. It's just his position sometimes is a little bit. What's the word? Unorthodox. He's getting the job done though. He's hanging with Alex, one of the best nine ball players in the world. He's only trailing by two games. Six to four. Look at that, nine. that nine he's just giving him there, Kevin. I wouldn't give that. Neither would I. Watch out, six ball and one ball. Yeah, no real control on that and this ball is on. He's gonna need the, the bridge for it, I believe. with some inside hold for the two into the same pocket yeah and the two to the three shouldn't be a problem three to the four could be an issue depending on the angle he could send us three then of course Somebody's five to the six also could be an issue somebody stole the bridge <laughs> he's found it though Lovely, just where you want to be. Drag this two ball in with low left. Yeah, this angle on the three to get to the four, critical angle, critical position. He may come two rails back and forth. Happy just to go one rail. I maybe think he a, can draw this off yeah. the side rail. Yeah, might be a bit more angle than he wanted. He could draw it over to the side rail and leave himself long on the four. He might be able to go forward between the five eight, go two rails around towards the four. It's hard to tell from this angle. But he doesn't want to mess with that 5 8. He'll just draw to the side rail, take a long shot. He's going to come all the way down short side. Yeah, good shot.
big bounce. That looks pretty good to me. Yeah, it can come three rails now. Stun past the side pocket. Bottom rail. Might hit the fell. We can even just draw it, look. Yeah, I'm not sure he's happy with that, is he? Yeah, he's, he's held up the cue ball too much. Didn't think he could hold it so much, does that, Kevin? He hit it really too good. got hold of it. Yeah. If he can just slide past the nine here, he's okay. That for a shot. That's a pretty nice shot. Brown first? No. Watch that, mate. Watch that template rack. I mean, I'm no expert on the rules, but I think if the cue ball touches that Accurac with it hanging off the edge of the rail like that, I think that's a foul. Yeah, you're right. Oh, he just avoided it. He played a positional shot to avoid the template rack. <laughs> Nice out there by Alex. Had some difficult shots that rack. Worked his way through it like a surgeon now. Seven four. There's that two ball again, look, Kevin. Yeah, it's looking less and less like a coincidence and more like uh, an intentional choice. Which, of course, would be against the rules. Dry break brings Scott to the table with a Pretty open layout. Good look at this one to start. Yeah, this is the, the hardest shot, isn't it? To get a, a shot on the two ball from this one. We go around two rails. Played it well. Nice. Nice cue ball, nice path. Table, but then the, the shot is to get from the four to the five. So, cue ball roughly to where it is now for this three ball. And then you'll have to play across the table twice to get on the four into the same, uh, sorry, the five into the same pocket as the four. That's what he's looking at now. Looks pretty good. So now, 
twice across and five into the same pocket as the four and he should be home and dry doesn't want to let Alex get on the hill just yet if at all that's a good shot Yeah, he let the cue ball get away a little. Most nine ball players, when playing that shot, they know that scratch in the side is there, so they usually make sure to hit the ball not hard enough to get to that pocket, just in case you're not 100% accurate with the line. So, you know, just Scott just, you know, not 100% confident with the speed of the cue ball. He's been struggling with the speed of the cue ball this whole match. But he is making it work. Just needs to stun to the side round and back over to the centre again. Oh, he held it even better. What a good shot that was. Oh, nice. Sherlock Holmes would say, well, I was just going to say, as Sherlock Holmes would say, this is elementary. That was just a lack of concentration. He used up all his concentration on those tough shots and then uh, he figured he was home free and let his concentration lapse for a second. We've all done it. He's I've done, done it. He's done a... F He's done a fed or gorse there. He's left the seven, eight, and nine on the table and said, Alex, you can have it. Ball in hand as well. Hey, he put the two ball in a different spot this time. He must have heard us talking. Oh, he's swapping the balls around. He's not finished yet. <laughs> it may still end up in the corner. <laughs> Oh, here we go. <laughs> well, not this time. I think they're all going to come off again. <laughs> he must have been uh, watching us on the live stream and heard us talking about uh, him racking the two on the corner. So he decided to uh, move it somewhere else. He's on the hill now. This is looking very ominous. The freeze up, De being defrosted. Another dry break. He might have got away with this though. This isn't a straightforward combo, this 1-5. No, but it looks like a pretty straightforward safety, especially for a safety player of Scott's caliber. Even though he's not liking it. I'm not sure he can get through to the angle to make the combo anyway. So it could be a safety he's playing here. He's had several looks at it. It must be very close. Oh, not sure about that one. That was extreme difficulty, what he was trying there. Well, the good news is he has not left an easy shot for Alex. Alex is going to be forced to play a safety here. I think he could be in a lot of trouble here though. Could even get him down behind the two. Unless he's just coming behind the eight, is he? I don't know what it will. 
Well, Scott can pretty easily... He can hit and stick behind this five pretty... Wow. I really expected him to really freeze that cue ball there. He let that cue ball get away. That's a standard one pocket shot. The hit and stick behind a ball like that. But he has left distance for Alex. So much so he's not interested in taking it on. Just gonna hide behind the six. Can't tell if he's got him or not. Either I think way, he's left a little bit poking, poking out. <laughs> I meant the rack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a lovely shot on here. Behind the four ball. Safety has earned Alex ball in hand. Hard to tell if that two goes by the four. He may be forced to go forward. Shoot the two in the bottom left corner. Looks like the three ball does have room to pass the five. Barely. Looks like the three has most of a pocket. Well, he's uh, got a bit of an angle here. He's got to watch out for this eight ball coming around. Perfectly executed. Everything's wide open now. The difficult parts are gone. Not liking Scott's chances of getting back to the table from here. Even if Alex is dead straight on this floor, and I think he is, he could just shoot a stop shot here. The five ball's practically hanging in the corner. He doesn't have to do anything special with the cue ball. And that's exactly what he's chosen to do. an unexpected miss unexpected by Scott too I think and I'm sure unexpected by Alex so a chance then for Scott Flirting again with the side pocket, but he's all right. So a good chance here to save at least one match point, so to speak. Yeah, Scott was on life support. The doctor was coming over to pull the plug, and I think he tripped on the way to the on the way to the electrical outlet. So Scott's still alive. And she'll say, don't worry about the nine. 
Mr. Frost. <laughs> yeah, apparently we're playing an eight ball tournament, not nine ball. Has anybody even shot in a nine ball yet? Oh yeah, one time. I think, I think Alex shot one in once. Yeah. I think that was it though. If we had anybody watching this that doesn't know what nine ball is, that one would be thinking, oh, it must be where you have to put all the other balls and just leave the nine ball on the table. <laughs> I was at a tournament recently in Austria where Kelly Fisher was playing a semi-final against Han Yu and Kelly was 5-1 down and she decided to take a, a time out and the, a big clock comes up on the, the scoreboard where it says, you know, it counts up the five minutes and Kelly walked back to the arena and it was five minutes and about 25 seconds and the referee pulled out a yellow card showed her the yellow card and docked her a frame as well and so she went 6-1 down in the race to 8 I think it was Wow So rules are enforced sometimes shall we say Players knew they were only on a five minute timeout. Nice break there, probably his best one so far. Makes the one, shot on the two in the side. A little bit of traffic to get through, to get onto the three, but it's possible. Can probably run the cue ball in between the six and the four, can he? It looks to me like he can get through there without hitting the six. But I've been yeah, fooled by this camera it. angle before, so I'm not going to commit to it. I think he's got to try and get between the seven and the nine as well. This is very tricky. No, oh, not much thinner as well. Good shot. Oh, I didn't want to be on the rail, though. Well, can he bump into the seven here, Kevin? Bump into the seven. We'll hold him on the four. Oh, even nicer. Bumped onto the nine ball. That's a and left him plumb on the plumb. <laughs> Beautiful shot. Stop shot on the four. Get some perfect on the five. He had a swing at that one, didn't he? It's all right. Yeah, flirting with danger a little bit there. He's over here, this one. Yeah, he's let that one go Probably about. about. He over hit that by about two foot. Doesn't Does know his own it? strength. Oh, he can't see. Cool. Look at this. Where's Look at this. Up? Where's well, he going to end up? He won't, have to, he won't have to pot this one, surely. Oh, Alex is making him pot it. Oh, he gave it to him. He gave it to him, but he shot anyway. Now, normally, if someone gives you the ball, but you shoot anyway, it counts. <laughs> I think they're making up their own rules for this particular <laughs> match. I think they've agreed between themselves what they're doing. 
Yeah, normally if someone gives you the nine but you choose to shoot it anyway, if you miss it, that's on you. <laughs> the game's not over. Yeah, I remember doing that in the mat. It was hill hill. I was on the nine ball. Similar shot to that, but easier. More or less straight in. And the guy was unscrewing his cue. So I just smashed the ball around and he screwed the cue back together. <laughs> and a little discussion ensued, shall we say. Yeah, as you uh, politely discuss the, uh, the <laughs> ethics and morals of, uh, <laughs> of the rules of uh, pocket billiards. Yeah, I'll never forget that. He then tried to say he, the end of his cue came loose. The little stop a bit in the bottom, you know, the rubber bit. And uh -huh. uh, he said he was tightening that up. Uh -huh. I said, oh, your cue <laughs> fell apart then. <laughs> yeah, after he unscrewed it, it fell apart, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, All right, breaking one well now, look. He's got a bank on the two. Could he hold the cue ball for the three into this bottom left? Is there room past the nine? Could even draw into it. I don't know. Playing that three to the bottom left, I, that that looks like a, that looks hard to do, even with ball in hand. Even if you stuck the cue ball with ball in hand, it'd be, that's a hard shot, especially to get to the four. Yeah, he's looking at going, leaving the three in the side now. Is he going? Is he going to bother taking on the bank shot? I think he's got to. Looks pretty dead on to me. It's either that, or you just, you know, kind of suck that cue ball in behind the seven. It's too tempting, isn't it? Scott Frost, not only a good one pocket player, he's also a great bank pool player. Did he leave and himself he a shot? Shots. <laughs> Yeah, I think he might be partially obstructed by this seven. He's firing. Might be going to the other corner instead of the one that he's straight into. It's wide. Oh, it's in. Oh, Good nice speed. Shot. Alex was 8 4 up in this match. And it could be 8 7 very, very soon. Yeah, Scott's been struggling, but he's he's hanging. He's hanging with Alex. If he can win this game, is 8-7 and breaking. He's totally in this match. He is not out of it by any means. That's okay. Well, mind that eight ball. And normally you'd play this with uh, bottom left, go two rails towards the six. Shooting it with the bridge, that might change things. He may just choose to just cinch this ball, center ball, with shooting with the bridge and go one rail up the middle of the table. Ah, oh, not a bridge, kind of extension. All right. He's just going to roll it in, come down the middle of the table. And that's mostly because he had to stretch for it. If he could reach it comfortably, he probably would have drawn it two rails. Yeah, I think he just ran out of cue. They couldn't get any more on it, so... Another interesting little quirk about the Derby City I've just thought about. Okay, it doesn't apply to any of the outer tables, but it's when on the main stream table, on the Accustats stream table, the live one, 
they have a shot clock I think it's a 40 second shot clock but as long as you're down on the shot when the clock runs out it's okay you don't have to shoot before the clock gets to zero so that's another little quirk yeah the, the City. W, yeah the WPBA uh, used the same rule at least back when Tamray Rogers and uh, Chris Rogers were a part of it um, I'm not sure if they're still doing it with Dr. Poole as part of with the with the new WPBA I'm not sure if they still do that but they used to do that at the WPBA also yeah interesting and this is getting interesting as well because Scott Frost just needs this mid-range nine ball to move with him one behind and he'll be breaking to go hill hill all right that's seven uh seven three games in a row brings him up to seven in this race to nine trails one eight to seven so he's won three games in a row and he's not done at the table yet can bet your life he'll be making sure he gets this rack absolutely straight all the balls nice and tight let's see if he uses the instructions by the book again first for eight balls on leave the one off give him a little push up and then place the back ball just straining out the rack there really is taking a lot of care in setting these up there you go last ball comes in so he's been making the one in the side quite regularly on his last few breaks and that really has been the difference hasn't it Kevin he's he's got the brake working nicely let's see if it works for him again and if he gets a and if he gets a shot afterwards oh, no one in the side this time dry break. dry and look at the one but there's a very easy safety on here could even play it as a two-way to be honest the one ball yeah I look I look for Alex to shoot at this one he can just slow roll it he's got lots of balls he can hide behind there's Tony Chohan by the looks of it another great one pocket player just walking past in the background T-Rex yeah, that was that was with his old shirt. You know how I know it's his old shirt? Because his new one has a big railbird on it. <laughs> ah, you're one of his sponsors, hey? Yeah, we're uh, right in the s smack dab in the center on the uh, back of his shirt. So when he's uh, on the streaming table and he's bent over shooting a the shot, there's our there's our railbird. Yeah, for those of you watching for the first time there's lots of great matches from over the years on railbird tv give us a, a like and subscribe of course and then click the bell and every time we upload a video you'll be the first to know he is shooting at the corner swish center pocket And he usually was when I usually when I utter those ahead. words about the subscribing and all that Kevin you you um the producer normally puts up the graphic but it didn't happen that time I think he's fallen asleep give him a nudge I think uh, I think our technical director has uh, I think he stepped off for a cigarette break or something dirty habit <laughs> don't like that one for sure He 
little nudge on the five here. Yeah, it just loosens up that cluster a little bit. Yeah, he caught it a bit thick. He didn't want to be by the seven and six, really. He wanted the cue ball to go slightly more to the right. So a yeah. bit of a tricky shot to play here. Nothing to do with the cue ball, so still like him to get this. Five into the same pocket. Overcut it. Oh, he's overdone it. Oh, he's had a result. He's got second prize. Easy kick shot for Scott, though. Just shows, doesn't it? Whenever you're nudging into balls, you're never guaranteed where they're going. And that was a prime example. Nudged into the five. And then got hampered over the top of the six and the seven. As you say that, should make this. Just catch the second round just before the four ball to get the cue ball out of the way. Get it out towards the five. Nice shot. Oh, has he gone too far? No, he's okay. So could it be going hill hill? This says all the makings of a hill hill thriller. choice controlled it nicely eight and nine a little bit of a one pocket play here eight and nine into the same pocket Alex will say thank you very much shake of the hands we're all square heel heel race to one uh, Scott was trailing eight to four at one point he's won four games in a row hill hill and breaking and if anybody I think Scott's been breaking better than Alex this set uh, so I think you got to give the edge to Scott, even though Scott's been struggling this set. I think you got to give the edge to him. Yeah, and we haven't really seen much of Alex in the last few racks. I think he's had about three shots, maybe not even that, maybe two shots in the last four racks. break needs to make the one in the side I think that's Mike DeLauder right in the front of our camera here have they taken a time out I think they might have done no, he just had to go for his break cue. We're ready to go. Oh, Iron up that rack. Gonna... Seeing if it's straight. He doesn't like it. Gonna try again. And hey, normally there's a line through the center of the table there where the rack's placed just so you can get the back of the rack in line with the front of the rack on the pyramid spot very important that you get them square as well as tight First time he's been so meticulous 
about the rack and I guess at Hill Hill you can understand why All right, here we go with what should be the final break of this set dry oh, this does cut in this one ball if Alex wants to take it on it's there he also has a couple of options for safeties Could try to get the cue ball over behind the 2 3. He could come off the right side of the one from his point of view, thin, send the cue ball back up table behind that 4 7 area. I think he goes at this and takes a chance on a little cannon. If he does cut at this, I think he can go up and down table, staying this side of the eight ball without without touching any of the other balls. Play position for that two in that upper right corner. I'm not sure what he's looking at. Looks like he's playing the. He's looking at the safety. It looks like. Looks like he's trying to see. Does he have enough room past the eight to? to hit the one thinly on the right-hand side from his point of view. Looks very indecisive at the moment. He needs to make up his mind before he gets down. Don't want to end up playing a, a no-shot kind of thing. Uh, Alex is very good about that. He will survey his options and he will make up his mind before he pulls the trigger. And did he hit it hard enough? Just barely. He got there. stick hold the cue ball behind the two very good uh very good solid contact and i think he may have left just an edge of this one maybe enough to cut it in yeah he can make this cue ball around the back of the six as well cue ball heading back up towards the two three so you can play this as a two-way i think You see, he's looking at playing the two in the side. So he might even be able to come between the rail and the six, and then the, between the six and the eight. Yeah, that looks to me like the path to Q. That looks like the natural path to me. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. This is one of them shots where, you know, you just go out all out for the one. The cue ball's going to do what it does anyway. Just go all out for the one. <laughs> oh, he caught the six. But, as I said... You know, because he concentrates so much on the making the ball, he's made the ball and he's got the next shot at the table and he can play a really good safety here if he wants. He can go for it in the side, but he could really tuck him up behind the three here, send the two ball across twice. Doesn't really matter where the two ball goes if he gets the cue ball in behind the three. 
Yeah. I think he goes for this. I think he's I think he's gonna go for this run out. You know, the five and six look a little tied up, but the four ball gets you perfect on the five and the five ball, you know, basically a stop shot on the five gets you pretty good on the six. All he has to do is put this two down and get good on the three. Should be match over. Even if he's a little bit straight on this, it's not the end of the world. He does look pretty straight on it. So this does complicate things a little, because you know you want you want to get kind of close to the four to for your position to the five. You know, shooting like a stop shot on the three or something like that, where you leave distance to the four, makes it real tough to get to the five. So he's got some work to do. Might be able to play a, a big draw shot off the side route, back over. Draw off the side route between the five and the eight. Oh, he can go forward. What a shot this is. If it runs, oh, it didn't really gain much by going all around the angles. Now he has to drag this slow round two rails with low left. Just a dab of left. Really bite into the cue ball to hold it. Yeah, but Alex has a great kill stroke. He can he can hold this up. If anybody can, Alex can. Yeah, he played one earlier, didn't he, on a five ball where he held it too well. Do you remember that one, Kevin? Playing five to the six. Oh yeah, he hit it too good. shot this is if it bounces what a shot this is how is the speed brilliant oh, it's okay he can play this with he can either draw into the nine take a chance he can play off the side rail with some inside he's got options here can play a little nudge off the rail into the six giving himself every opportunity hasn't he I think he plays the carom, the cannon into the nine here, Kevin. Yeah, that was a really nice shot on the four. The speed was really nice. Oh, he uh, could avoid the nine entirely and bump the six. Yeah, it's all over for Scott. He had so many, he had three different shots he could play there. He ended in a really good place on that five. Just shows why he's the champion that he is, coming with shots like that. Yeah, and that, that shot kind of sums him up, doesn't it, as an all-rounder, where he's very good eight-ball player, good one-pocket player, good straight-ball player. <laughs> Drawing on all his knowledge. Take drawing back. Yeah, he's just gonna take his time now. He doesn't want to do, doesn't want to make a silly mistake after all that. He wants to make sure he does everything right. So he's just gonna take his time and yeah, wait for the person at the next table. <laughs> I think he can just draw to the side row and hold for the seven into the side pocket doesn't like something he's 
taking a lot of time over this shot now he's going forward Yeah, he's in good shape on the seven. Shoot the seven in the side. Cue ball to the end rail. Back out. Eight in the same side. Don't even think he has to use the other rail. Kevin, does he? Can just drop it in, can't he? It looks like he does have that option where he could slow roll this. Or he could shoot a little bit harder and go to the rail. Yeah. He's got away with one here, I think, Alex. He had a little bit of a wobble in the middle of this match. Didn't really sort the breakout, did he, at any time? And then Scott started to break really well. Pulled it all the way back, but oh, all looks for nothing now. So Scott will be reaching into his back pocket, pulling out another hundred buck note. Giving it to the tournament director and say, put us back in, would you? Oh, I'm not sure about that shot. <laughs> yeah, I don't, don't know why he played it like that. Well, That's our shot. If I'm Alex, I'm looking at Scott and saying, is this good? Do I got to shoot this? <laughs> <laughs> You've given me all the other yeah, ones. Just shake his hand. <laughs> I think this is the first nine ball he's had to make. No, the second. The second one. <laughs> Does he remember how? Let's find out. He does remember how. Alex Pagalion narrowly dodges that bullet. Wow, that could have been uh, that could have been a great comeback face by Scott. That was a great comeback to bring it back to eight eight, but just couldn't get over the finish line. What a what a what a good match that was. That was a nail biter all the way to the end. Anyway, I am Kevin Ross along with Mark White. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys. Ta-ta. Yes.